Hello, hello, Diwan bookstore uh, followers, enthusiasts. I am here with you today to do this live video. My name is Dana Danawi. Thank you so much to Diwan bookstore for inviting me. I'm just going to wait a few seconds to wait for everybody to get informed and to come on. I love doing live videos and I'm so excited to be with all of you here today. Um, Happy Ramadan. Ramadan is almost over. It's almost the Eid. I hope you've all had a wonderful, blessed, peaceful month. And I hope you're all really looking forward to having your kak and coffee on, on uh, Saturday or Sunday morning. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, I see a whole bunch of you coming on. So say hello in the comments. Those of you who have seen my videos before or on my groups know that I love for you to be interactive as I'm talking. So send me the hearts, send me the likes, comment as I'm um, sharing this information with you. Ask me all your questions and let's get started. My name is Dana Danawi. I am a holistic health and wellness coach. I help women rebalance their hormones and get out of the cycle of yo-yo dieting so that they can regain their energy and they can regain their confidence so that they can rebuild a, a guilt-free lifestyle that fills them up daily instead of continuously worrying about what's the next diet that they're going to be on, what's the next meal that they have to eat, all of which takes away from the real focus of living and thriving and having a beautifully abundant life. So thank you again to Duane for asking me to come in here today. I'm going to talk about today one of my favorite, favorite subjects, which is why diets don't work. And I know that with the end of Ramadan, especially this Ramadan, because it, it came in the middle of the pandemic, came in the middle of the quarantine. We were probably, all of us, not eating optimally coming into Ramadan. Most of us probably started Ramadan thinking, I need to lose weight before Ramadan. And now definitely with the end of Ramadan, even if it wasn't in the middle of a pandemic, usually what happens, and definitely by the end of Eid, our thought process is right. How do I get back on track? How do I fix whatever I may have done during Ramadan. I've been eating a lot of sugar. I feel like I just want to keep eating sugar. Like what can I do to rebalance all of this after Ramadan? And typically the period after Ramadan, sort of like January and September is the time when we think of like a new beginning. Like if I'm going to change how I'm eating, if I'm going to go on a diet, this is the time when it happens. So if this is where you're finding yourself, let me know in the comments, say yes, Dana, I've been eating way too much sugar. I've been having way too many desserts. I definitely am considering a diet after Ramadan. Let me know in the comments and let me get started to, by telling you why diets don't work. So I've been a health coach now for seven years and health coaches are different than traditional, conventional dietitians and nutritionists. So what we do is we take we, that we're called holistic health coaches because we take a look at your entire life when we figure out what is the best way for you to eat for life. So we don't do diets and I don't do temporary fixes. It is about thinking long term. So this is where the main difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian and a health coach will come in. So through my work in the past seven years, and I've worked with thousands of women and having gone through this process myself, right? So I'm, I'm almost 47 and I went on my first diet when I was 23 after I, I had my daughter, after my first pregnancy. I had never gone on a diet before. And I remember I gained 25 kilos in that pregnancy Again, because everybody was like, oh, you're pregnant, just go and eat everything. You're eating for two, don't worry. As soon as you come out of the delivery room, you're going to look like how you look like right before you got pregnant. And so I literally ate everything. I was hungry, so I just ate everything. There was no real nutritional guidelines back then beyond going to your doctor, your monthly visit, and he would weigh you and he might say, hmm, you know, you gotta slow down a little bit this month. You're gaining a little bit this too much this month. That was it. And so I gained 25 kilos because there was a part of me that was convinced that I was just gonna lose all of this weight really quickly after my pregnancy anyway. Of course it didn't happen. You don't just gain 25 kilos and just lose them a week after you deliver. So when my daughter was around six months old, I still had seven to eight really stubborn kilos. And I was eating very traditionally. I was having 
chicken paneer for lunch with french fries and salad and sandwiches for breakfast maybe some cereal with some milk i never thought that the way that i was eating i never thought there was anything wrong with it and i couldn't understand why I wasn't losing the last little bit of weight. So it was the first time ever that I go to a nutritionist because I needed to lose those last eight kilos. And he put me on a very portion controlled, calorie controlled plan. 800 calories to be exact per day. And I will never forget to this day, every single morning I had a half a cup of skimmed milk with a half a cup of bran cereal, that was breakfast, and then lunch was one chicken breast with some sauteed vegetables and green uh, salad with just some lemon juice. And then at night, I was allowed one piece of brown toast with either one piece of low-fat cheese or one boiled egg or two tablespoons of tuna. And every night, especially at night when you get hungry, right? I would go and I would take the piece of toast and I would toast it in the toaster and then either the egg or the tuna or the cheese and I would eat it with a fork and a knife because I wanted it to last longer. I wanted it to take me longer to consume because if I had just put the tuna on the bread and just eaten it like this, it was, it was gonna finish really quickly. It was such little food. It was 800 calories. Did I lose weight? Of course I did. Like who's not going to lose weight eating 800 calories a day? I think it took me two months to lose the eight kilos. Of course, it was, you were literally working on sheer willpower. Was I able to sustain this plan? Was I able to stay eating like this? I stayed eating like this for, I think a year, even though I'd lost all the weight, but I pushed myself until I got pregnant again with my second child. And then of course I ballooned again. I was like, finally, I'm pregnant. I can just eat whatever I want again. And so I basically ate whatever I wanted again, gained all the weight again during that pregnancy. And then I went back again to another nutritionist after that pregnancy. And you all know the cycle, you all know the story. So since then I have done that calorie counting diet, I've done Atkins, I've done South Beach, I've done, I went to another doctor, he, he gave me a diet that I still, until today, I don't really understand. It was like Robert Reef Baladi in the morning with Malatin Fool and then Kubayat Makarona and some vegetables for lunch and then a yogurt with fruit for dinner. Like it didn't make any sense to me, but I did it anyway. And then when I got bored, I went back to Atkins again. I went back to South Beach again. And then there was a really popular book around 10 years ago. It was called Skinny Bitch. And it was basically... Uh, the one of the first books that advocated how to be a vegetarian. So I was like, okay, let me try being a vegetarian. I did it all. I went through every single possible diet that you can think of. And just when you look at that pattern, you can see where the problem is. Like, why didn't I just stick with one diet and just stay with it for life? Which brings me to the first reason why diets don't work. I'm going to give you three reasons why diets don't work. The first reason is that it's not sustainable. All of us have done diets, so many different diets, and we do them. And when we do them, let's give them some credit. They work while we're on them. So the diet works while you're actually doing it, whether it's a 14 day Atkins, whether it's you're working with a nutritionist for three months or six months, whatever it is, you do it just literally by the, the force of your, your sheer willpower to get you to your deadline. And each diet has a deadline. So already you can see how the, it's not sustained, the unsustainability is built into it because it has a deadline. It's the, the idea of creating a lifetime change or doing something that you're going to carry with you for life, that doesn't factor into a traditional diet. It's that the, 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 we're always course correcting with diets. We're always, oh my gosh, I just gained five kilos over the summer, or I just gained five kilos or 10 kilos over winter, or I just gained five kilos for Ramadan. I need to fix that. So we automatically think I have to go and I have to go on a diet. So you're constantly just trying to fix a problem that has you know, appeared in the past few months. You're not thinking with a diet, I need to transform my life or I need to transform my health or I need to transform a disease. You are just very focused on, I have an event coming up. Um, 
when it's time to travel again, I want to travel in the summer and I want to feel light and I want to be able to go shopping, uh, whatever it is, course correcting, course correcting, or with one very limited goal in mind. So already, the fact that it's not sustainable is the first problem with the diet. It doesn't take you longer or it doesn't take you beyond the deadline that the dietitian or the nutritionist or that you have set for yourself. So it's bound to fail. It works while you're on it, but the fact that you can't keep doing it then means that it's, that it's failing. And this is why we keep jumping from one to the next. So you do one, you finish it, 28 days, 40 days, three months. And then when you're done with it, you gradually go back to how you used to eat before and like, oh, well that diet didn't work. Okay, let me see what's the next best diet out there. Who's the next, who's the up and coming doctor or nutritionist out there that I can go to? So then you go to the next best thing and you follow that exactly. And you do a really, really good job at it and you lose the weight, but then you're done. You reach your goal, you travel, you go to your events, you fit into your dress, you're done working with this doctor, you get bored, slowly you go back to your old habits, you regain the weight and it's like, hmm, okay, well that diet didn't work. Let me try another one. And so this is how we all found ourselves in this vicious cycle of yo-yo dieting, going from one diet to the next, to the next, to the next. It's not because those diets in and of themselves didn't work while we were doing them. It's because they didn't have the rest of our life. They didn't take the rest of our life into consideration. They weren't about long-term lifetime changes. So that's the first thing. Diets are not sustainable. The second really important thing about why diets don't work has two parts in it. You don't get the right support and you don't get the right accountability. So with all due respect to nutritionists and like traditional conventional nutritionists and dietitians out there, or if you choose to do, you know, there's so many online programs out there. If you are not getting the right support and accountability while you are going through this process, at some point it's going to fall apart from you because whether it's a long-term change that you're making or it's a diet that has a, a very clear beginning and end that you're following, it's still different than what you were doing the day before you started the diet. So I start tomorrow, I'm, I'm go, I go to a nutritionist, he gives me a plan, and when I go into his office, he puts me on the scale, he weighs me, he writes down my weight, and then I leave, that's not support. Because now I've left the office, I go home, and he told me you need to start this plan tomorrow. So I look at the plan, and I've just finished Ramadan, so I've been eating, you know, roz, or macarona, or feta, or kunefa, and ataif, and now tomorrow he wants me to wake up and eat robert reef, beledi, and malatin fool. Okay, so I go and maybe get my groceries, get ready, and maybe the first day it's okay and it's easy, but then the second day I'm doing the same thing, and then the third day I get tired or I get bored, or I feel hungry, or I just hit a mental block like I can't do this anymore, where is the support system around you to help you and to motivate you to keep going? So you don't get that. Jumping on a scale once a week, that's not support. When you are changing, whether, you know, regardless of whether this diet is the one that's going to transform your life permanently or it's something that's just short term, where is the support to help you go through these steps? So if you're not getting the right support and then you're also not being held accountable. So if the only thing that you are responsible for is a number on the scale every week, again, that's only gonna take you so far. You're not going to really be motivated. Like if, if, if it's just the number, if it's I'm just gonna go show up at a doctor's office, jump on the scale, check the number, Okay, like how many times can you do that with until you start to get a block, until you get some kind of resistance, until you get bored, until you have are invited out somewhere and the temptations are too much. So unless you have the right kind of support that not just supports you physically as you go through this change, but also supports your emotional process as you go through this change, because it's a huge, there's a huge range of emotions that you feel when you are changing how you eat, it's not going to work and it's not going to be sustainable. So you need the combination of support and accountability. We all need accountability. We all need 
some kind of a system or somebody to come and say, right, how are you doing today? Have you done X, Y, Z today? Have you accomplished what you said you're going to accomplish today? Without that, any plan is going to fall apart. So the first two reasons why diets don't work are they're not sustainable. It's not something you can keep doing for life and they don't have the right kind of support and accountability. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me as I'm talking? Let me know, those of you who are here watching, how many diets have you actually been on? Like how many diets in your lifetime, I already counted mine, Calorie, Atkins, South Beach, a couple of doctors, skinny, bitch, vegetarian, eight. I've done about eight or nine and I recycled through all of them. Let me know in the comments how many plans you've actually gone through, how many diets you've put so much effort in and then you actually succeeded in and then you gained all the weight back and then you have to go and try another one. Let me know in the comments. So those, those two points, first two points of why diets don't work. They're not sustainable. There's not enough support and accountability. The last reason why diets don't work is the most absolute crucial reason. And that is because they don't address your cravings. There isn't a single conventional diet out there that has built into the framework of the diet why you have sugar cravings, why you have salty cravings, why you're an emotional eater, why when you're tired or depressed or bored, the first thing you do is you go and eat a whole bag of chips or you eat five chocolate bars or you go and make three cheese sandwiches, whatever it is for you. There isn't a single diet that will go through and bring your awareness around why you're eating the way that you're eating that has caused you to gain weight and now you need to change that. And you can't, you can't address something in your body just looking at the present. You need to look at the root cause. Why am I an emotional eater? What's happening in my life that I can't stop eating chocolate? Why do I, at the end of the day, always need to go and open up a bag of chips? So what happens when you go on a diet, you're just, you're suppressing all of those emotions because you're so determined, again, just by pure, sheer force of willpower that you're gonna get through this diet and I'm gonna get through this meal, I'm gonna get through lunch and I'm gonna get through dinner and then I'm gonna wake up again and do it all over again but the minute that this diet is finished or the second that you just don't have an ounce of willpower anymore, the floodgates open and it is just give me everything that I can eat, right? And we've all gone through this. The second that you just can't do it anymore, it's give me the cake, give me the pasta, give me the rice, give me the bread, give me the chocolate. And you find yourself and you feel like, I'm a failure again. I, my willpower, I lost my willpower again. They put a piece of cake in front of me and I couldn't hold myself again. I must be the problem. I must be the failure. I can never stick to a diet. I don't know what to do anymore. So I might as well keep eating and then I'll try another doctor next week. I'll try another diet next week. So the problem is not you. The problem is that you didn't have a plan that had sustainability built into it, that had support and accountability built into it, and more importantly, took into account why you're eating the way that you're eating to start with. Especially for women, and this applies to men also, but especially for women, our emotions play such a huge part in how we eat. We eat when we're happy, we eat when we're sad, we eat when we're bored, we eat when we're depressed, we eat when we're tired, we eat when we feel let down, all of that. And if you're not addressing those emotions as root causes of your cravings, there isn't a single diet in the world, a single diet that is ever going to work for you. So you need to be able to address cravings. What I'm going to tell you now briefly, because this can go, this can be like another talk, another three hour talk on its own, is how do you know 
what kind of cravings you've got so that you can start to raise your awareness around them. And then when you raise the awareness, then you can start taking the action around how to minimize your cravings. So you have two kinds of cravings, believe it or not, but we do get them muddled up a bit. You have emotional cravings and you do have physical cravings. In both cases, they are signs that your body's giving you that something is missing in your life. So let's talk about physical cravings first. So so often we might feel tired, depressed, moody, sad. How many of you go for chocolate when you feel like that, right? Or when right before your period, you go for chocolate. So sometimes there's literally a deficiency in our body and our body gives us a physical signal that you're actually missing a certain nutrient. You're missing a vitamin, you're missing a mineral, and it gives you that sign. Of course, we misinterpret the signal and that's where the problems start to happen. Very, very common one, and this is why I'm asking you all, when you're tired or when you're about to have your period and you crave chocolate. All of us, right? Chocolate. Chocolate, believe it or not, is full of the mineral magnesium. And magnesium is an absolute essential mineral for so many bodily functions. It is called the master mineral, actually. So many functions that you need, one of the most important of which is to keep your blood sugar levels steady and to keep your mood steady and to keep anxiety levels down and to keep irritability down. Magnesium does all of that. So our body innately knows that we need magnesium and it innately knows that magnesium is abundant in chocolate. So we go for the chocolate and why does the chocolate make us feel good? Because it's full of this mineral that we're actually missing. It makes us feel better. So we then program ourselves that whenever I'm tired or depressed or right before my period, if I eat chocolate, I'm gonna feel better. So it's not the, it's not the chocolate that's making you feel better. Your, your body's giving you a signal that there's a physical deficiency in magnesium. So it's a craving, physical craving. You interpret it as chocolate, but actually what your body needs is the magnesium. If when you get this awareness, then you start to fill your body on a regular basis with other sources of magnesium, like bananas, like certain types of, of nuts, for example, or if you even take better sources of chocolate, like um, raw cacao or pure cocoa, you're gonna find your cravings for chocolate decrease because you're going to be giving your body on a regular basis something that it's missing, a physical deficiency. And I mean, like I said, we can go on and talk about this forever because there's all sorts of vitamins and all, all sorts of minerals that we can be deficient in and each one will give a different signal. So, but just be aware that there are physical deficiencies that can show up as cravings. Then of course we have the emotional cravings, right? We have the emotional deficiencies, deficiencies that show up as cravings. So emotionally, anytime we're feeling depleted emotionally in our life, we're going to turn to food to help and buffer the discomfort from that feeling. So just imagine, you know, I mean, now of course our daily lives are different, but on an average day, let's say you're a working woman, you go to the office in the morning, you go through the motions of work, it doesn't even have to be a very eventful day at work, but this job that you go to is not really something that you love. Maybe you used to love it, but it's become really boring, really not exciting. It doesn't light you up every day. It pays the bills, but that's just about it. You go through the motions every day. Maybe it's even really stressful. You finish work, you come home, you have to take your kids to all of their activities and then there's homework and then they need to be fed and then everybody needs to settle down and take a bath and go to sleep and maybe you don't have enough support at home. Maybe you don't have enough emotional or even physical support at home. You're doing all of this by yourself and you find yourself once the day is finished, you finished work, your kids are taken care of, you go and just open the fridge and you just eat almost whatever is there really. And the reason for that is because during the day, emotionally, you have been depleted. You haven't been fulfilled on a professional level. You, maybe you don't feel like intellectually you were stimulated or pushed or excited or motivated. And then you came home and perhaps you didn't really find any support from your spouse, uh, either emotional support or literally physical support. 
helping you with the kids. And so we have emotional needs and we have things that feed our soul that are even more important than the things that we need to feed our bodies. And when those get depleted, we automatically, without even thinking about it, we try and fill those voids with food. And guess what? It's not usually cucumbers and salad. When you're feeling yourself emotionally depleted, sad, tired, depressed, bored, emotionally unsupported, you're gonna go for comfort foods. You're not gonna go for broccoli. You're not gonna go and eat an apple. And that keeps you in the vicious cycle. So diets don't take that into account. They don't take into account how was your day today. They don't take into account are you excited in your job? Or if you're a stay-at-home mom, are you happy being a stay-at-home mom? Or is there something else you would rather be doing? Or how is your relationship with your husband? Is it mutually supported? Or do you feel like you're the one doing all the work? Or with any of your primary relationships? Um, do you move? Are you physically active? Our bodies need to be moving a lot. When that is not sufficient, you're going to find yourself eating to make up for that. Are you spiritual enough? Do you have hobbies? Do you have passions? Is your soul filled up? Any time that that is not at a level that it needs to be for you to be a thriving woman, thriving human being, and anytime you have feelings of discomfort around that, you are going to use food to get rid of those feelings of discomfort. And no diet helps you figure that out. So when you're on a diet, you're literally just pushing yourself, pushing yourself, pushing yourself, pushing yourself to follow the plan. But at the same time, you might be tired from work, depressed because of your relationship or something happening in your life, but you're also squashing that because you're trying to follow this plan exactly until you can't anymore or until the emotional part of your life takes over and so and it floods over and you feel like you've your willpower is lost and you give in to the cake to the cheese or whatever happens to be your comfort food so whenever we're thinking of a diet we need to think of something we need to have a plan that takes all of these things into consideration and you need to get into a mindset where I'm not just going to do something temporarily just to change the number on the scale, but I need to do something that literally transforms my life, not just physically, but addresses all of the physical and emotional deficiencies as well. Because I could teach you how to eat all the salad and all the broccoli in the world, but if I don't also teach you the root causes of your emotional deficiencies, it will only work short term. It will only work so far. All right. Um, so quick recap, the three reasons why diets don't work. They're not sustainable. They don't offer support and accountability and they don't address your cravings. This is the most important one. If any of you have questions for me, oh, there's some comments. Let me look through the comments now. And if any of you have any other questions, please post them now and I can start answering your questions for you. Uh, Lael, hi Lael, two doctors starting age of 15 and they ruined my metabolism. Then at 18, I did Weight Watchers and it changed my life. There you go. Yumna, my main issue is my hypothyroidism and emotional eating. Uh, this is actually something that I address very specifically in my programs, Yumna. So if you're interested, please send me a message and we can have a conversation around that. Um, when there is what we call an autoimmune and when there's a hormonal imbalance, that's another layer, right? So beyond the sustainability, beyond the support and the accountability, beyond the cravings, there is actually a, a metabolic issue going on with the body that we also have to address. So I can definitely help you with that. If you're interested, Yomna, please go ahead and send me a message. Uh, Amr, when I get weight, it goes to my stomach only. How can I control it? I would have to know what you're eating um, so basically, if it's going straight to your stomach, that is part hereditary, but part also the type of food. If you find anybody that you tend to gain weight just in your midsection and nowhere else, that could also point to elevated levels, so elevated stress levels. So that would be something else to look at also. Uh, anybody else have a comment or a question? 
Yomna. Well, yes, Yomna, please do. I'm looking forward to uh, connecting with you. Anybody else have a comment or a question for me about the three main reasons why diets don't work? They don't work. They're, been prov they're proving over and over and over again. And just the fact that you keep jumping from one to the next, to the next, to the next, that they don't work, that it's time for a complete shift in thinking, a complete paradigm shift in order to have results that not just change the number on the scale, but take our emotional state into account, take our lifestyle into account, take our long-term health and disease prevention into account also. So I am not seeing, let me just make sure because I'm on my phone, let me see if there's anything showing up here. Okay. Leal, what would you recommend as good foods for summer and hydration? Great question. The best foods always, especially with summer and especially for hydration, are fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables actually have uh, a, a different type of hydration. They sort of have innate, inborn hydration that is, it, it is just as equally important for the body as water. So fill up. There's no such thing as a fruit that makes you gain weight. There's no such thing as a fruit that should be off limits. Every single fruit is amazing to eat. Mangoes, dates, all of those, you want to be eating those in abundance. You don't gain weight from mangoes. You don't gain weight from grapes. You don't gain weight from watermelons. You don't gain weight from bananas. You don't gain weight from dates. All of those fruits that traditional nutritionists and doctors would tell you are not good for you. Those are the reason why you might be having deficiencies right now or the reason why people become deficient or the reason why people become sick is because they're not eating enough of these natural live hydrating healing foods so thank you for the question Dayal. fruits 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 and more fruits uh lilian i'm a pre-diabetic how can i prevent to turn into diabetes again i would need to know what you're eating lilian specifically if you are eating any kind of what we call processed carbohydrates so if you are eating any type of bread, whether that's brown bread, white bread, beledi bread, rye bread, any kind of bread that is a processed carbohydrate that will raise blood sugars, that needs to go. If you're consuming any kind of dairy, milk, cheese, yogurt, again, that converts into sugar, even skimmed, full fat, full cream, that needs to go. Any type of processed food, so any, anything that comes in a package that needs to go, that might have added sugars in it, um, processed foods like pasta, processed carbohydrates, you want to replace those with pure, natural carbohydrates from nature, which are the fruits and vegetables, as I said. But again, if you want to have a conversation about this, please message me, Lilian, and we can, we can have a chat about your specific condition. Delia, how do I know the suitable diet for me? I am an emotional eater. Again, I would need to know, Delia, exactly what you're eating. So if, if all of you have a specific question for me, I would love to connect with all of you. Send me a direct message, uh, Dana Danawi, or you can join my group. I have a group called Empowered Wellness and Living with Dana Danawi, uh, or you can also post your questions for me. Um, but send me a private message. That might be the easiest thing, and we can connect that way and perhaps set up a time for us to have a free initial consultation um, so that we can have, I can specifically guide you based on your specific concerns. All right? So Delia, Yumna, Lilian, um, those are the, those of you who want to connect with me, please send me uh, a direct message. That's the easiest way. All right. Anybody else have questions for me, ladies or gentlemen? Chips. No, chips are out. If I don't know, you just said chips, Delia. I'm not sure if what you're, if that's a question, but chips are definitely out. Um, potatoes are not out. So potatoes are a great vegetable, potatoes, sweet potatoes, but chips as chips, processed chips, no, because they are made that is not very healthy. And then of course they're packaged and processed and they're sitting in a, in a, in a bag uh, on the shelf in a supermarket for God knows how long. It's not a fresh food. It's considered a processed food. All right. I hope that answers your question, Delia, uh, if I understood it correctly. 
All right. Thank you so much to all of you who have joined me here live. And thank you to all of you who might come back and watch the replay. It has been my absolute pleasure to be here with you. If any of you have any other questions or would like to connect with me, please send me a direct message or join my Facebook group, Empowered Wellness and Living with Dana Danawi. And it will be my pleasure to continue the conversation with you there. Thank you so much. Bye.